Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be working on how to create a custom macro in FreeCAD. Um, it's going to be a macro for the Sketcher Workbench and you can see it pictured here. We'll also be adding the macro to the toolbar. You'll see I have a sample that I've already completed here. It's going to be a centered square. So it's centered using the symmetry constraints and then it's set to 10 millimeters each. I find myself often creating this construct before I do some other things. After we create it, we'll be using the customize dialog, which is gotten to this way, to first add a custom macro that to make it available as an icon, and then add it to a toolbar. We'll be adding it to the toolbars in the Sketcher workbench. So let's close that. And this is a sample of, of the recording. So this sample is recorded to uh, centered square for video macro. I'm just going to delete this because we're going to do it to the same place. And let's close and reopen the Mac, this, the sketcher. Close without saving. And then I'm going to create a, a whole new document for this, for this video. So the way it, so the way you use the uh, macro recorder, is when you're ready to do the recording, you just simply hit the record button. Let's do this first. And we're gonna, when, when prompted, we'll, we'll name it the same as this, uh, this file here. Now you don't have to have this open to record a macro. And in fact, let's just close that. And we'll say yes, so that's, it's empty. And now let's start the recording. So it'll ask us to name and we're going to say centered square for video. As I said before, I think I got that the same. And we'll click record. And yeah, I guess we'll just overwrite it. And so now simply we'll go through the steps of creating this, creating the square uh, like you would normally when you're creating a sketch. So first I'm going to take a rectangle and draw it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these, this point, the center line of the y-axis and the other point we'll add a symmetry constraint we'll do the same thing for this vertical line here using the x-axis as a symmetry point and then we're going to add two length constraints a horizontal here and we'll make that 10 millimeters and a vertical here and we'll make that 10 millimeters and that's our construct and we will stop the macro and we should i think we'll be presented nope okay so now the macro exists, but to get to it, you have to go into the macro dialog. So you'll see centered square for video that we just created. And when you click on edit, you'll see everything that you just did um, listed in the macro and this, and this will run. So let's run this. Let's do windows tile. And first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete what's there and, and you'll understand why in a little bit. Um, I don't know why it does this. That's something I'll have to look into. But anyway, so we have this macro. And if we click run, you'll see it, it just completely does the exact same thing we just, we just completed. So that's good, our macro works. Now I'm gonna show you how to add this macro to the toolbar. I've already gotten one here, so I'm gonna end up with a second one next to it. Um, this, this contains the same macro, but with some additional changes to make it work a little bit better. So to add this, this macro to the toolbar, you right click on the toolbar and we're going to click customize. And this is the menu you saw at the beginning of the video. You can also do get to the same thing by clicking tools and customize. So at this point, I'm going to click on the macros tab. And the first thing we need to do is create a custom macro. And I think this is erroneously named. This should be create a macro icon or create a menu entry or a toolbar entry or toolbar icon um, because we've already created the macro um, or oh, I guess I guess it's correct it's set up custom macros so we created the macro here with the record and now we're going to set it up to be added to the icon so I guess that's okay I take it back so now I'm going to go and I'm going to select centered square and we'll just call it centered square And we'll copy the same thing into the tooltip. This isn't really important because I'm going to be—I'm not going to be keeping this. 
And then for Pix Map, the Pix Map map name might be a little bit misleading because you can really use just about any image format I've I've tried so far as worked. Um, and you'll see I have created my icon here. And if I remember at the end, I'll show you how to create that icon. So now that I have that, I'm just going to click Add. So now I have a uh, entry that can be added to a toolbar. So now let's go to the toolbars. And toolbars are grouped by workbenches. So you have to pick the workbench that your toolbar is going to appear in. If you pick global, it'll be available for all of them. So I'm going to put it in the Sketcher workbench. And so whenever I open the Sketcher workbench, my toolbar will be available. And then the first thing you do is cr click New, and that creates a new toolbar for that workbench. So I'm just going to leave that one as custom because we're going to be get, getting rid of it eventually. And then you go over here, and these are the uh, icons or macros or file menus items that are available to add. I'm going to click on Macros. I'm going to click the newly created center square and right arrow it over. So now you see that now it's a item of the custom too. If you don't don't like it, you can remove it, or if you want, you can add additional ones. So I've added hexagon, um, which is a macro from one of the developers, to that as well. And you see I've done the same thing twice here. So now that your toolbar, your custom toolbar is complete, you can close this. And I'm going to delete this, and we're going to run the macro again. So now you can see the macro is easy to run. The problem that I run into that I've run into is that uh, the, this macro isn't um, how do I say it isn't exactly robust. So what will happen is if I click the center square again, it's going to try to create another one, but it's going to run into cons conflicting constraints. And let's see if I can describe that. And that's because when you create a when you create these lines, the first time through this is line zero one two three. And then the second time through, it's going to be three, four, five, six, or, or I'm sorry, four, five, six, seven, because you have eight total lines. But the but the macro is still trying to add the constraints to. So let's, like for example, this one. It's still trying to add the constraints to line zero, one, two, and three. It's, so it's trying to do that each time, even though you've already even though you've started a new box. So the next thing we'll need to do is make this so it, it intelligently understands that this coincident goes to this instance of line segment. So we're going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my macro that I've already created and show you that. And so that's going to be Sketcher Centered Square. So it's named a little bit differently. And we'll close this and tile these and you'll see the difference so the first part is the same I create a an array of of line segment parts and then they get added to the sketch sketch is defined here as the act you know as the active sketch this will be something I have to make um, dynamic later as well because right now it'll only add to that one sketch but so when we when we add the geometry we set the return the, the list of items here uh, created by the geometry to line one, line two, line three, line four. So these are objects that refer to what's created by, by this part of the command. So now when we go, instead of adding constraint, constraints specifically to the line and point, we add it to dynamic variable line one, point two, line two, point one. So that way, this will always refer to the just created, uh, just created line here instead of, you know, uh, statically to the very the line zero one two and three always, or one two three four or whichever. So the same is true of the horizontal constraints. We were we set that to L one L three, the verticals. We set the s symmetric constraints to L one point one L one point two, and what I'm assuming is. Uh, negative 2 refers to the y-axis and negative 1 refers to the x-axis um, but I haven't checked that but that seems to be what it does and then finally the distance constraint we do the same way so that's how you make it dynamic so that you don't run into the problem 
of conflicting constraints. So I'm going to close both these macro windows and show you the difference. So let's add a sketch. Let's do it from part design. Oops, so we had one open. That's the problem. Let's delete the delete this one. Add a new one. And so this is my non-dynamic version that we just created and this is the one I created before and you'll see I get I get my one centered box and I'm going to change the measurements to 20 millimeters Let's change them both to 20 and then I'll be able to add another add another box so you see now it's able to add without this is the old message it's able to add without conflicting constraints and I could do that as many times as I want you see I've gotten an error um, but you'll also see I've got many, many boxes. <laughs> now, if I try to add it with our unmodified macro, you'll see I get conflicting constraints right away. So that's how you do it. Now, the final thing is I, you'll notice this macro is, you know, I stole from this and made it, I put in the center point and the axes. I think that does pretty good. I might like to make the red and the green a little bit bigger so they're more visible. But let me show you how I did that. So the first thing I did was I went this was I was trying to read through the class definition and understand how the constraints worked, but anyway, I went to um, I went to the artwork section of the facecadweb.org, and I saved off the SVG. So I right click and save image. Where is it? There it is. Save image as, and then with that image saved, I went into let's see if I have it. Inkscape. Uh, that's that's going to be my title screen. see if I can find it no, I don't have it open let me pause and open that because I think it's worth showing you so here I am back in Inkscape I've opened I so I opened my finished version um, so my finished version just includes these two lines and the center thing and it was it's because it's an SVG it's kind of pretty easy so I just copied this pasted it here and then added two lines and set their background colors to the primary red and prim primary green or vice versa and then I saved it uh, as an icon. And then the final thing you need to do to, to be able to access that icon is when you go into here, customize, and you're in macros, and so let's see, and you do pix map. If the icon won't be listed in here right away, is you go into icon folder and you add the folder where your newly created icon is. So you, I put mine right into macro icons. So anyway, I hope you start creating some macros if you don't. And if you do already, I hope maybe I showed you something new with a toolbar. Uh, I'm, I know for certain I'm going to love having this little, this little piece here. It just saves a couple of steps. So if you like my channel, subscribe. Um, and make sure you click the alarm so you get notified. And sorry for all you non-FreeCAD lovers. I've been stuck on FreeCAD for a while. I do have some stuff that, that's coming up for OpenSCAD and for some other things. And I hope to get to them soon. So at any rate, have a great day.